Blog Talk Radio. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is the Chopping It Up Show, brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. I'm your official marching podcast announcer, David Thompson, and here's your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. All right, good evening and welcome to Chopping It Up. I am your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you tonight. Today is May 14th, 2013, 5 o'clock on the West Coast, 8 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, We appreciate your listening this evening. This month is a very special month to me because it is our one-year anniversary month. Um, One year ago this month, I started broadcasting on Blog Talk Radio And I'm blessed to be here one year later with plans to be here many, many more years. We want this month to be special, so we will be chopping it up every Tuesday of this month with one of the classmates with me at Jackson State that are now doing big things in the world today. I am honored and proud that I know these people, but also because they are graduates of a great HBCU institution making a difference, and providing a positive images for our youth and for HBCUs. At the end of the broadcast, if you decide you like the show, then we would appreciate a donation to the network if you feel so in your heart, of course. Simply click, simply go to themarchingpodcast.com and click on the donate button to improve the show and to build our scholarship fund. Tonight, we chop it up with DeMarco Morgan. DeMarco is a graduate of Jackson State and came in the same year as I did in 1997. I met DeMarco through our resident brass instructor, Avery McFadden. Um, He and Avery were roommates in the honors dorm, I believe. Um, So got to know uh, DeMarco very well. I think we met our freshman year. I'm sure we did. And um, DeMarco was also on the SGA So, you know, his face was everywhere and people knew who he was. And just seeing him today as a news anchor, I I can definitely say that fits him. You know what I mean? So really happy for him and happy to say that I remember someone from school that is on TV every night. Um, So that's really, really cool. Great for Jackson State, great for Chicago, and great for us all. This will be a podcast and will not take any calls, but you are welcome to contact the show at marchingpodcast at gmail.com, tweet us at marchingpodcast, or follow our blog, blog the number four dot the marching podcast. Let's take this time now to hear from our sponsors. Tonight's show is brought to you by Liquid Effects Photography, Block Band Music, Bandhead.org, Universal Credit Sources, and big deal fundraising. Let's take the time to hear from them now. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to bandhead.org. And coming this fall, hbcubands.com. Write that down, hbcubands.com. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments, or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. 
Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Are you thinking of tying the knot, having a party, or celebrating that special time in your life? To capture these special moments, call Liquid Effects Photography and take advantage of our 10 years of quality and experience. Liquid Effects Photography covers most of the Midwestern U.S. and will travel even farther on request. Call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Or check out our website, liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. Is your credit score keeping you from buying a home, a car, starting a business, or getting a job? Is your score keeping you from living the life you want? Well, look no further than Universal Credit Sources. UCS can help with charge-offs, collections, late payments, bankruptcy, foreclosure, debt settlement, tax liens, and more. Our program is affordable with results in as little as 40 days. Call now for your free 10-minute consultation with Senior Credit Analyst and Loan Officer Angie B. Call her direct line at 469-362-9904. That's 469-362-9904. Or check out the website at UniversalCreditSources.com. Universal Credit Sources for anything that's hurting your credit score. Okay, we're back now, and we're ready to chop it up with DeMarco Morgan. You can contact the show if you have any questions or comments for DeMarco. So without further ado, let's chop it up with DeMarco Morgan. You're now here with the Marching Podcast, and we're here with another great guest, uh, Mr. DeMarco Morgan. What's going on, DeMarco? What's up, man? Good to be on your show, and uh, happy anniversary to you, too. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> DeMarco was another great uh, Jackson State classmate of mine, and um, it was really cool to just to see where you are now, like on television, and um, you've been doing a really a lot of big things, so I'm just really proud of you. So so let's get right into it, man. Uh, where are you from, DeMarco? Well, uh, first, thank you, man. I appreciate that, and uh, thank you for your friendship. Over the years, like you said, we go way back to uh, 97 and uh, Avery McFadden, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and one of your close friends and a close uh, friend of mine. But I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, also known as Black Wall Street of America. I uh, grew up in Tulsa, uh, graduated from Booker T. Washington High School. I uh, graduated at the bottom of my class, made a 13 on the ACT, uh, <laughs> once a 16 twice, and uh, applied to a number of uh, colleges and universities. Uh, was denied acceptance to all uh, but one, Jackson State University, and uh, they opened their doors for me, man, and I have been climbing and rising, uh, thank God, ever since. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, you know, I'm just now really understanding the term um, the youth is wasted on the young. You know, I'm really yeah. understanding that now. I was the same way. I was the bottom of my class, and I took the uh, SAT I think like four times or something like that, you know. Um, so I was in the same boat as you. So was that the main reason um, that you picked Jackson State, or were you familiar with Jackson State when you were applying? You know, I, w I was familiar with Jackson State because uh, a number of uh, my classmates who also graduated from Booker T uh, were in the band, the Sonic Boom of the South, uh, with you guys, uh, Skeet, Alvarez. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, yeah, and Kamal Lakey, um, uh, Kia Hill, who was a Jay set. So you had a number of people. Kia is my cousin. I had a number of people coming from Tulsa who were joining uh, the band. I was in the band in high school, but I just didn't have what it took, man. <laughs> Getting the Sonic Boom, you guys practice all day long, I know. every day. So <laughs> uh, instead, I just joined the SGA. Uh, but no, I, I, I love Jackson State, and, and I'm so grateful that they did. Uh, open uh, the doors. God works in mysterious ways, so it was where I was supposed to be uh, at that time, at that point in my life. And I had uh, wonderful professors and uh, mentors uh, who helped me turn it around uh, because it wasn't 
that I wasn't applying myself or, or, or that I was slow. I just wasn't applying myself, if I could say that. And I uh, got to Jackson State and remained on the uh, the dean's list and the president's uh, honor roll. And uh, what, at Jackson State my junior year, was the only African-American ranked in the top ten collegiate journalists in the country by uh, Scripps Howard. Wow. Uh, then finished at Jackson State and then went out to Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism, which is an Ivy League school. So I uh, you you know, fast forward from when I had an English teacher at my high school who said, you're better off finding something to do with your hands uh, because in order to be on TV, you have to know how to write well and speak well, and you can't do either. When I look back that far and then fast forward to uh, getting to Columbia, it's like, wow, God can do anything but fail. But it is because of my grounding at uh, Jackson State that I am who I am and where I am today. Yeah, that's a that's a great point because, you know, I was the same. I felt the exact same way and going through a lot of the things. Like, you know, it was, I guess, like it was, I guess, uh, being young and immature, but definitely it was just a question of just applying yourself, you know, like, you know, you, and that's, and I'm so glad you said that because there are some guys out there that are just like us, you know what I mean? And maybe them hearing that, you know, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that, maybe some of them are out there actually listening. But it's good to have you on here now saying this where it's like, hey, you know, that's maybe you're just young. You know, you'll be fine. You know, just keep shooting for what you would like. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, and, and, and the unfortunate thing is that you do have uh, people who are out there, uh, your professors, your teachers, even family members who will tell you that something is impossible to do. And, and sometimes it's because of what has happened to them or right. things that they never were uh, allowed uh, to accomplish. So you have to be careful because it can also cripple you. But I thank God for my mother as well, who is a, a praying sister, praying black woman, uh, who pushed me and made sure that I knew that I was somebody and that I could achieve anything that I put my mind to. And also my father. My father died at an early age, but when he was alive, he also pushed me and gave me that hope, and I think that's important uh, to have that foundation. And I tell kids all the time, even if your mother is not in your life or if your father isn't in your life, find that one person who believes in you and sometimes draw off of their strength, because you're going to have to use your own. But there are days when we want to give up, and you have to call somebody like Joe, or you got to call somebody, you know, who's close to you and say, hey, man, I need to lean on you. I need to believe in myself, and I need you to pump me back up and get me to where I am, where I need to be. So I always tell guys and the young ladies, never judge your future based off of your current circumstance. Hmm. That's deep, man. I mean, that's I mean, that's essentially, you know, like how I started the podcast. I really wanted to make sure that we were – uh, getting especially to the young African American community, we were getting these messages out there because you know it's not they don't hear it enough, you know, and uh, that's why you know we would like to highlight people like you who are doing things, so more people are gonna be like, hey man, I want to be like Demarco, you know, versus somebody trying to be like Lil Wayne, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so and, 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 and not even that, you know, not even knocking Lil Wayne's. Uh... Hustle. Now he he has to watch what he you know says because he just got in some uh, trouble with uh, Mountain Dew and the whole Emmett Till yeah I saw uh, that. family situation. You got to be careful uh, when you uh, careful with the words that you use because you can hurt people by uh, things that you say, and you just have to be mindful. And uh, I'm sure he has recognized uh, Emmett Till's uh, place in history. Uh, and also it's a place for us as African Americans. So you just really got to be careful. But I, I tell kids, whatever you want to do, hey, go for it. Uh, if it's tattoos and dreads, but you're being <laughs> positive and you're giving back, mm-hmm. hey, go for it. Or if you want to be in the suit, just just follow your heart. But don't hurt people along the way. Because karma, what goes around, comes around. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What you put into the universe, it comes back to you. Mm-hmm. And, and definitely shout out to Lil Wayne because, you know, we got Cortez, another one of our uh, classmates. Yeah, uh, who man. Who manages him. Yeah. So proud of him. Yeah, so uh, it's really cool. You know, it's just uh, I, I'm just happy that we have examples like you. So 
So so so moving on with now now you said journalism. Now did you know that you were gonna um major in journalism when you were at Jackson State? Dude, uh, ever since I was in the first grade, uh, I've known that I wanted to be on TV and go to journalism. It was uh, back in 1986 when the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. Uh, we had the first school teacher who was going up in space, so it was a big thing for uh, kids our age across the country. And uh, I remember watching um, the Space Shuttle take off, which was a big thing. And watching it with some of my classmates and stuff, and we saw the, you know, the rocket shoot up in the air, and then all of a sudden we saw this white smoke, and we didn't know what was going on, but, you know, we thought it was a part of the deal. It was just white smoke. Mm-hmm. And then I remember uh, Miss Tilly, who was my uh, teacher at the time, uh, she started crying. We didn't know why she was crying. And then Dan Rather was delivering the news about what happened. And... I'll never forget it. And I said, wow. Then President Reagan, I believe, uh, came into programming, broken programming, and uh, said something about the uh, the shuttle blast. And that's when I knew that I had been bitten by the broadcasting bug. Because there was something in me that just wanted to tell uh, stories, affect people, you know, uh, get a taste of the major, major stories that are taking place in our community, and I have been at it uh, ever since. Sometimes I get tired, sometimes I want to give up, man, but I think about the little kids who are behind me, uh, those who are with me, and those who are before me, who have paved the way, and I just can't give up. I know God has something big for me. Yeah, man, that's 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 amazing that you brought that up. I believe I was in the third grade when that happened, and I hey, remember... You're older than me. You're older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> but I remember being just like you, thinking like, "What just happened?" You know, because cause from what I remember, like you said, it was the white smoke. Like I don't remember seeing an actual like explosion. You know what right. I'm saying? But I remember thinking like, "What's going on?" And then I remember the grown ups. Like I remember uh, Miss 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 Gordon, Mrs. Gordon. I remember she had she put her hands over her mouth. And I was thinking, like, what's wrong, you know? And so then, of course, later, like you said, the president came on. And then later that night, my my mother and father explained to me what happened. But I definitely remember, because I think that was what the first time I remember, like, uh, breaking news happening and then, like, the president coming on to deliver something. Like, I think that was the first time I actually noticed something like that. Um mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's deep, man. So so ever since then you knew what you wanted to do. That's awesome. So um you did well at Jackson State and then I heard you say you went straight through to Columbia. What made you apply to Columbia for graduate school? You know, I, I had a professor at uh Jackson State, believe it or not. Uh one, I won't call his name, but uh <laughs> challenged me and he was like, you know, we've had students who've applied to, you know, get into that journalism school and uh, none of them were ever to make it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go after it. And uh, I went after it. It's the, in my opinion, it's the number one journalism school in the world. Uh, it's old, of course, founded by Joseph Pulitzer. And uh, we all know what the Pulitzer Prize is. It's the, uh, the highest award that you could get. And um, it was a 10-month master's program. It's in the city of New York. It was just something that I couldn't say uh, no to, and I guess the most profound or uh, riveting moment uh, for me while at the J school, uh, just a month after I had started, not even through orientation, was when those Twin Towers collapsed. Wow. And that was a tough time for a little southern boy coming from Jackson, <laughs> Mississippi, going to a major city, and then, wow, this is, this is it. This is now the biggest story in our history, mm-hmm. probably as a nation, to see something like that, you know, happen. And, uh, you know, I just, I just thank God for every single experience. And, and, and Columbia has opened so many doors, so many doors for me, but I, I couldn't have made it through uh, that school that only accepted, I think, it was 211 students out of 3,500 applicants. That year, I could not have made it through Columbia without J State. It's amazing how that school prepped me. But I love the best of both worlds. 
I love the best of both worlds. And because of all of those experiences, I've been able to go back and, you know, uh, deliver commencement speeches at uh, high schools and colleges, uh, even speaking at our uh, dear old college home, Jackson State, um, 10 years after I finished uh, school and one of the youngest uh, graduation speakers in our history. So, so he, it, it, it's amazing just to see how, how God works. I keep giving him the glory. So, so yeah, so we graduated together. You finished in 2001? Yes. Okay, yeah. So that's what I saw. I, I, I do remember that, and I do remember 2011, you were the keynote speaker. The keynote speaker at ours was Roderick Page, who was the mm-hmm. first um, African-American cabinet Secretary member, yeah. secretary and graduate of Jackson State as well. We had a really... Yeah. A uh, really good keto speaker, matter of fact, and um, I was really, really proud to hear that you were um, the keynote speaker that one. I was like, "Hey, man, I went to school with Marco," you know, and <laughs> and another man, cool. You know we brothers. Yeah, exactly. And another cool thing, like you said, J State prepped you. Um, I went on to graduate school at um, Indiana University of Pennsylvania for nice. uh, for uh, geography, and. I have to say the same thing. J-State prepped me the same way because, like, Avery, we both remember Avery, and you and you yourself, you guys had good grades in college. And I'll never forget, like, seeing, like, man, these guys party too. Like, you know what I'm saying? I see them out, but they still got, like, three three-point GPAs, you know. And then just seeing a, just um, a lot of young black males having three fours, three fives, that actually changed my life because I did not see that representation growing up. You know what I mean? I saw much more of us involved with athletics or whatnot, but I didn't see your your DeMarcos, you know, scoring, you know, three-point GPAs. You know, I didn't see that on a regular basis. And then, then you look around, and if you remember, to do anything at Jackson State, you had to have a 275. You know what I'm saying? So it was like not only do you need a 3.0, but you can't even do anything really unless you have something close to it, you know. So that definitely prepped me. So it was good seeing you, you know, doing well in school because, you know, it had an effect on me. And believe it or not, when those freshmen came in and they saw you and all those other people, you know, they wanted to do well in their schoolwork as well. So I think that's what really prepared me as I got out into the real world because I knew that there were other people out there like you doing well academically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you, man. But, I mean, hey, you always had it together uh, yourself, too. I mean, you were always uh, doing something uh, great, so and hats off to you. And also starting your own radio show, that's cool. That is pretty cool, man. Yeah, definitely. Start here. Yeah, definitely. You know, out here in California is definitely different. Um so we're getting somewhat close to the end. Um, I wanted right quick. You said you played in the band. What instrument did you play? Dude, I'm gonna make you laugh, man. I couldn't play an instrument. <laughs> I played the cymbal. Oh, nice. That I played in my freshman year, <laughs> and I couldn't read music. And I actually got put out the band my freshman year, but I wanted to be drum major. Wow. And uh, my sophomore year, I was the mascot. I was just trying to hang on and doing something with the band. Uh. And then my junior year, I was the uh, the band announcer. And my senior year, the first one in our history, uh, Booker T. Washington's history, uh, to be named head drum major. That's all right, man. So you... And yet you know, I just wouldn't I wouldn't let him win, the band director. He said, Oh, you'll be drum major for a long before I make you do it, you know, before I let you do it and I, I won in the end and he's been one of the greatest uh, inspirations of uh, my band director, uh, Emily Davis, former band director. Uh, was one of the greatest inspirations for me. I uh, went off to Gremlin for their band camp and got outstanding drum major. Nice. Uh, the little trophy, I mean, all of the stuff, dude. It, it, it's my life is so weird, but it it always comes back around to where I am challenged, or I have somebody in my life that says you can't do this, mm-hmm. and then it's like, okay, I will show you how God works. Right. That's really yeah. cool. That's it ain't always been. It ain't always been. You know. You know. Uh, I guess easy, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, it. I, I've been through some adversity. I have. There have been times that I wanted to quit, and I remember when I was uh, in New York working in New York, because I worked in New York as well. 
uh, worked in New York with NBC, worked in Miami with NBC, uh, Milwaukee with ABC, Jackson, uh, CBS, and NBC in Tulsa, and now NBC in Atlanta. But um, I remember in New York a couple of years ago, I was going to quit my job because it's such a it's such a cutthroat business, and it, it's very tough. And if you're not careful, it will chew you up and spit you out. Wow. And I remember calling my mom and saying, you know what? This is it. This is it. <laughs> this must not be for me. I'm quitting my job in the morning, and, you know, I'm just going off. And she said, I will leave you with this. When God brings you to a cliff, you have to trust him fully and let go. And either one or two things will happen. He will teach you how to fly, or he will catch you when you fall. Wow. And ever since then, it was almost like a rebirth of energy. And I said, never in my life. Will I ever utter the word? Failure is not an option. Yeah. And I'm still flying. I'm still flying. So I didn't just, you know, took off that little clip, and and I'm I'm still flying. He's still holding me. He's still taking care of me. And who knows what's coming next? That's the that's the other. That's the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the yeah. challenge. Yeah. That's really deep, man. I'm, I'm, you got some really good words here. So. Right quick, man, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to hear, like, like what happened afterwards. Basically, you finished graduate school, and then how did you get on TV? Because just like you said, I remember you, I think the first time I saw you, you were in New York on MSNBC, I remember. And I, I know you're in Atlanta now, right? So, like, how did you get from from there to, to there? And then you've also, didn't you interview President Clinton? Former President Clinton? Yeah, President Clinton. Yeah, a couple of uh, big weeks. Uh, yeah. Big weeks. Um, so how did that I, happen? I've been, I've been really blessed. Uh, I, I interviewed President Clinton when I was actually a student at Columbia, which was amazing because I tried to get the interview. And, it, you know, if you've ever been to New York and, and seen a press, uh, seen how the press follows the stories and stuff, you'll see it's almost like 50, 60, like reporters <laughs> from everywhere. And imagine President Clinton being in the house. Right. You just double that number. And I remember trying to get him to talk to me, and, and I was, like, very, like, little timid. I was a student. I was like, okay, he's not going to turn around and, uh, you know, talk to me. And it was even a challenge when I left the school. Well, you can't get him to talk. And I remember saying, Mr. President. And I said, Mr. President. Like that, and he turned around, and his back was, like, toward everyone. And, I mean, he talked to me for a good five minutes. Oh, that's and it was, right. like, the biggest moment uh, for me. But uh, Jackson, I was uh, an intern at Channel 12, uh, WRJMBTV there, and uh, then worked my way up to producing and doing all that stuff. So when I left Columbia, they had a job waiting for me in Jackson, then left Jackson, uh, went to Milwaukee, uh, top 30, uh, then went to Miami, became main anchor, the youngest main anchor in Miami, uh, then left Miami and went to New York. Uh, anchored weekends there, and I uh, did a lot of filling in uh, during the week, and then anchored for uh, MSNBC, cut-ins and all of that stuff. And then the opportunity to come here to Atlanta opened up, which is also top ten, but it was a Monday through Friday position because I, I love weekends. And New York is an amazing city, but you can't enjoy it on the weekends if you're working on the weekends. So <laughs> right. I came here to Atlanta, but also uh, Atlanta opened the doors for another uh, great opportunity because the NBC station here had never had an African-American male named to a primetime position in its history. So I'm the first. Wow. And sometimes being the first is, is good. It comes with issues, but uh, you want to be the one who knocks the door down so brothers can come through like myself. Right. If right. that makes sense. Yeah, man, so that's awesome. Atlanta is great, but, you know, I see how I'm watching how God is working in my life and he's taking me all over these places. A lot of people say, dude, why didn't you stay in New York? Or why didn't you stay uh, at MSNBC? Oh, my God, you know, you you were national. That's going to happen again. Mm-hmm. You know, that's going to happen again. But you, you can't be afraid to give up something good for something great. Wow. And so I don't know when his plan is going to come to full fruition. I don't even know if this was the right move, but I do know that his will be 
his will will be done. And that's when you're safe and when you're blessed beyond measure is when you're in God's will and not a part of your own plan. So this was what I was supposed to do. I am where I am right now because of where I am going in the future. Well, I really appreciate it, man. This has been really, really great to talk to you and just to catch up. Uh, I know we've been playing phone tag and you know, I was I was telling someone the other day, it's like, man, when you get grown, like you know, like that that job and that work, boy, that takes a lot out of you, man. You want to do? Oh, doesn't it, man? You got all them babies <laughs> running around the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, they definitely wear me out. So, um, b- before we sign out, man, I, I wanted to see like, um, how can we support you? Um, you know, through all of your adventures, if you have anything upcoming or anything, we definitely like to lo- to know about. And also, if you have any advice uh, for any of the young students out there, we like to to hear what you have to say to them as well. I mean, you know, I, I think supporting me, uh, you can always visit our website, 11alive.com, and, uh, you know, look at the stories and stuff, ideas uh, through Facebook or, or whatever. My email is demarco at 11 Alive. Uh, dot com, but most importantly, just I mean, you know, keep me in your prayers, dude. There was a time when I was afraid to talk about, you know, my faith and God, but God will take you through stuff to where you will realize that it's that it's Him. He's the one that's in control of everything. So, I mean, if you guys just keep me in your prayers, uh, that it works for me. As for advice for someone who's uh, coming up or or even getting into the television business, whatever business industry you are getting into. Just know that you will face adversity in college, uh, on internships. They always teach you the book knowledge or the hands-on experience, but they never really talk about those political games that you will have to play, uh, those disappointments that you will face, those promotions that you may be passed up on. Really know what you're getting into, but also believe that nothing is impossible. And when I say nothing is impossible, you can do whatever you want to do. But it's an old school saying, old school piece of advice that I'm sure you've heard before. you got to know when to hold and when to fold. <laughs> yeah. Know when to stay and when to go. That's right. And that's the important thing. If things are not moving in your in, in your favor, Sometimes you got to pack up and go, but don't sit anywhere for 30, 40 years trying to make something happen. Move on. Make it work. If nobody opens the door for you, you open the door for yourself. Well, I really appreciate it, man. That's just dead on. And like I said, I'm just really proud of you. Been, uh, uh, like I said, I first saw you in MSNBC, and then, and then of course, when everybody heard that, you know, that uh, you did our keynote. Uh, the commencement address, uh, I mean, it's it's just a real blessing, you know, and, and, and definitely one thing I know that's hard for myself is letting go and letting God, you know, because you just, you just don't know with, you know, your faith and just knowing that everything good has happened so far, that's kind of what you just have to remember, you know what I'm saying? So I'm really glad that you said that all that you said because, you know, the main purpose of chopping it up is so that we inspire and help some young person out there, um, so, so they can so so because like I said it's it's a couple of guys out there that like they're just like me and you and at the bottom of their high school class and someone's telling them like hey you know you should probably do something with your hands like <laughs> I know you want to be a lawyer but you know you, you, you I don't think you can do that you know so if they hear this and they hear they hear you um, they're able to be the next DeMarco or the next whoever it is they are so or the next Joe right yeah. right. <laughs> Well, I really yeah, well, appreciate it. Thank you so much for being uh, an inspiration in my life too, and uh, also for having me uh, on your show, man. When you when you really blow up, shoot, I I, I was a part of the beginning. That's, That's right, tell, folks. That's right, but man. I, I'm proud of you, man. And you call me if you need me for absolutely anything. You have a friend for life and a brother for life. We weren't extremely close uh, in college, but we were uh, close enough. Of course, we shared a uh, mutual. Uh, best friend, but man, you always got a place in my heart. If you need anything, please, please, please let me know. Yeah, and man. I'm there for you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, definitely. Just us band folks, like you said, other than class, we was in practice. It was right from like six to twelve. So yeah, we were best friends with each other, but it was always good to 
meet other folks who weren't in the band too. So like you, <laughs> you can keep your sanity. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Well, that's cool. I really appreciate it, Demarco, man. Good luck to you, man. Thank you. Good luck to you too, man. All right, that was cool. We're back, uh, back live, and thanks to Demarco for his time. Uh, it was really cool catching up with him. I hadn't talked to him in a long, long time. Um, but you know that I guess that's one of the good things of social media. You know, we're able to contact and connect with people that you know, or maybe we went to kindergarten or, or preschool with. So, really appreciate Demarco and his time. Before we sign off, let's hear from our sponsors one last time. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, please contact the show, and we will give you the criteria so that you can start uh, pubbing your business using our platform. Uh, the Marching Podcast is also opening up um, our time slots for any potential people that may have an idea of hosting their own show. Uh, we're using Blog Talk Radio uh, to host the show, uh, but we're uh, making some advances, so it's a little bit more of a deal uh, while going through the Marching Podcast. But you are free to also create your own show on Blog Talk Radio. We really appreciate them, appreciate the ideology, appreciate the service. So let's go ahead and uh, get into our sponsors now. Like I said, you can uh, look into contacting the show for becoming a sponsor or for hosting your own show as well. Is your credit score keeping you from buying a home, a car, starting a business, or getting a job? Is your score keeping you from living the life you want? Well, look no further than Universal Credit Sources. UCS can help with charge-offs, collections, late payments, bankruptcy, foreclosure, debt settlement, tax liens, and more. Our program is affordable with results in as little as 40 days. Call now for your free 10-minute consultation with Senior Credit Analyst and Loan Officer Angie B. Call her direct line at 469-362-9904. That's 469-362-9904. Or check out the website at UniversalCreditSources.com. Universal Credit Sources for anything that's hurting your credit score. Are you thinking of tying the knot, having a party, or celebrating that special time in your life? To capture these special moments, call Liquid Effects Photography and take advantage of our 10 years of quality and experience. Liquid Effects Photography covers most of the Midwestern U.S. and will travel even farther on request. Call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Or check out our website, liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Attention high school directors and alumni. Does your band need to raise money to travel, buy instruments, or uniforms? Are you looking to raise money to help your band? Well, Big Deal Fundraising is rapidly becoming one of the largest distributors of fundraising products in the industry. Big Deal is based in New York City and ships anywhere in the United States. Offering quality products, fast delivery, and innovative consultation that will help you meet your fundraising goals. Call today at 855-244-4430 or visit us at BigDealFundraisingUSA.com. Big Deal Fundraising, your fundraising partner for your band or music ensemble. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to bandhead.org. And coming this fall, hbcubands.com. Write that down, hbcubands.com. All right. That's all the time we have for the show. I want to, again, thank uh, DeMarco Morgan for his time. And uh, it was uh, really good catching up with him. Um, really good catching up with everybody, really, and uh, just excited 
that this has been our year anniversary and looking forward to the other two interviews we have. We also have coming up on this upcoming Sunday our year in review, our one year in the making, I'm sorry, uh, the Martian podcast for the 90 Degree Show. Uh, one year ago I got on the microphone and started talking and launching this whole thing and then we're going to have some special guests on there to try to talk about the upcoming season for marching band and some other topics related as well so please call in next week 718-664-6025 follow the show uh, check out the website and donate to the marching podcast.com like us on facebook follow us on twitter thanks to you for listening and remember the eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear advice may be misleading but examples are always clear see you next time